presentation um, uh, is, is making every day count for God. Making every day count for God. Or teach me to number my days. Make every day count for God. How to make every day, how to make every day of your life count for God or teach me to number my days. Now, I did a portion of this uh, teaching around 14 years ago. Um, but, uh, beloved, because um, I'll share with you in a, in a moment here, I may even do a top 10 messages over 33, 40, 34 years coming up. I'm not sure. They're all my babies. Um, they've all been uh, um, born and, and uh, birthed from, uh, from um, you know, my heart and, and God hopefully, um, you know, involving all of this. And so they're all beautiful to me, but we may do uh, top 10 in the last 34 years or whatever. But uh, because of what's happened recently in my life, I want to uh, uh, share this presentation with you, making every day count for God and three scriptures I want you uh, to begin to look at with me um, and then we will pray Psalms chapter 90 verses 10 through 12 Psalms chapter 90 verses 10 through 12 Psalms chapter 90 verses 10 through 12 I'll give you a moment to find it Psalms chapter 90, verses 10 through 12. Making every day count for God. Making every day count, teach me to number my days. Psalms chapter 90, verse 12. Beloved, in our churches, we never put them on the overhead. Why? Because I wanted people to have their Bible and to actually get to know their Bible uh, and, uh, and, and put it on the tablets of their hearts rather than making it again so easy. All they have to do is look up there and, they, and then, you know, out of sight, out of mind. But uh, I, just, I just didn't feel that was the way to go. Psalms 90, uh, verse 10. And the King James says the days of our years are three score and ten or seventy. And if by reason of strength... Four score or 80 years old. And verse 12, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. This is what Moses declared here in this psalm. He said, the days of our uh, uh, life is 70 years old by reason of strength. They could become 80. And yet is the strength and labor much as sorrow. And verse 12, so Moses declared, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Beloved, he again is saying that man's lifespan naturally here will be boiled down to roughly averaging 70 years old. For some 80 uh, by uh, strength of, of God in them. And, uh, but we pray for like a life of Moses, 120 years old. That's the flag I'm putting in petitioning uh, God in that respect. The second scripture, John chapter 9, verse 4. John chapter 9, verse 4. I've been continuing to have a number of discipling uh, individuals that I do each and every single uh, week. And they go anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours each, endeavoring to disciple them. I call them barley saints. They're growing. Uh, they're, many of them are newborns. They're moving from uh, barley saints uh, uh, to uh, wheat saints and eventually to tabernacle saints, uh, bringing forth fruit for God, moving again from barley to wheat and then moving from wheat to to tabernacle saints and um, uh, so precious are they many don't even know where to find the book of John and so they are fertile ground and fertile soil and I am able to make sure that they are taught um, and the deeper life uh, is put inside of them and I don't have to worry about compromise or watered down uh, messages uh, 
uh, to dilute the fire and the passion of what's happened in them and to them. John chapter 9 verse 4. Jesus speaking here. He said, I must do the works of him, the Father, that has sent me. For while it is day, you may want to circle that word day. For while it is day, I must do the works of him that sent me while it is day. For when night comes, no man can work. One more time, Jesus said, I must do the works of of him, the Father, that has sent me while it is day. You might circle works, and you might circle day, for when night comes, no man can work. Pause. Beloved, you're not saved by works. Over and over and over in your Bible, it declares you're not saved by works. You can't do something to be to reckon God, to uh, 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 deem you saved unto Him. The Bible says you and I are saved not by works, but by faith in Jesus Christ through grace, not of yourselves, but it is the gift of God. Okay, you're not saved by doing anything uh, for God or trying to get cleaned up for Him. You are saved by faith, a belief in what this Bible declares. You are saved by faith, uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the, um, by grace and, and it is the gift of God, okay? But He says here, Jesus, I must um, work uh, the works of the Father who has sent me while it is day, for when night comes, no man can work. Well, what is he saying? You are not saved by works, but Ephesians declares you are saved for good works. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Why? For good works that he has prepared beforehand that we should walk therein. We are his workmanship created for good works. Workmanship, the English word, the Greek literally is poem. We are his poem, okay, and we are created for good works, beloved. So make sure you and I understand, okay. And last scripture, Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Luke 2, verse 49. Don't you love God's word? Luke 2, verse 49. And Jesus said to his mother and father when they couldn't find him. Remember, Jesus was at the temple. And he said to his mother and father, they said, where are you? Where have you been? And he said to them, how is it that you were seeking me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Again, the title of the presentation is making every day count for God himself. I want every single day from this moment on in your life to count for God, to count for God. I'm going to say it again. I want every single day from this time on, and I'm going to shout it out that it would count for God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you again for the living, uh, living, breathing word of God that you have blown your Ruach spirit in it, that we receive life, we receive counsel, we receive wisdom, we receive understanding. We are so thankful that you have not left us without a compass. And we come to you and we pray that through your grace, and your mercy that you would again bring revelation and light into the dark recesses of my own life, my own thoughts, my own ways, and begin to turn my life to walk on the straight and narrow path. Help us to make every day count for you 
in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you, we honor you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Someone who loves him, shout amen out there, making every day count for God. Beloved, did you know you can make every single day we have a new day right now, every single day here on earth. Count, listen now, for your eternal rewards. Count for your eternal position. To count in the millennium, the thousand year reign, where his bride, you, will be here on the earth. To count in the new heavens and the new earth that will be created. But yet, beloved, even though you are a Christian and born again, that some of your days, for you, the Christian, and for myself, may not carry any of the above positions and rewards and understandings. This is one of the reasons, listen, why Moses declared in Psalms 90, verses 10 through 12, he said to us, teach us, to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Making your day count for God. First, beloved, the application in the natural. 1 Corinthians 15, 46. Paul says, first in the natural and then its counterpart in the spiritual. The Old Testament was the natural. The New Testament is the revelation or the spiritual. So he says our natural days, barring a rapture, are uh, averaging 70 years globally and 80 for some and for a strong person. And again, as I have declared to you, we pray like Moses that we would live uh, to 120 years, able to give glory to God Himself. And the second application is the spiritual. Teach us to number our days spiritually. In the natural life is short, isn't it? 70 years, I'm 60, uh, uh, what am I, I'm 65. <laughs> See, when you get that old, you don't even remember how old you are. I'm 65 and life is um, uh, uh, sweeping along quickly. Teach me to number my days. The second application is spiritual. Teach me to number my spiritual days. Listen very carefully, beloved. For your Bible declares you can have days, natural days on this earth that have no spiritual value. Uh, no spiritual value, and yet you can have days on this earth that do have eternal spiritual value. Teach us to number our days. So we understand our days in the natural here are limited and finite. But also realizing that each day you and I are living here on the earth can be spiritual days that God, listen, He's able to number them. He's able to number them as spiritual, eternal value, which brings reward, which brings position, which brings authority, which brings a host of uh, arenas I'll share with you. But you can also have days as a Christian that aren't counted by God, that have no spiritual value at all. They can be days that are li lived carnally, that are lived selfishly for Steve, that are lived in the flesh. They are days of possibly rebellion and, and sins in our life, etc. Those days on earth will not be counted by God that have and carry any spiritual value, spiritual rewards, and understanding of authority and position and placement in heaven, in the millennium, in the new heavens and the new earth, and the new earth. Most Christians and ministers, listen, have no idea of this doctrine, of this theology concerning teach me to number my days. 
again, not just in the natural that life is short and you and I will pass away and we will stand before the living Christ and give an account of our lives. Many Christians, we don't really think too much about it. Some I encounter don't even want to think about death and about uh, the life to come. But even more so, beloved, ministers and Christians have no understanding of the theology and the doctrine of spiritual life and spiritual value, spiritual rewards, or even uh, days that God will number if they are spiritually minded. Most Christians going to heaven, they have their fire insurance card And most, if I can use that, live their lives unto themselves. And uh, and, and, and many, again, don't even number their natural days. And how be it, they don't even know that God can number their spiritual days. It's tragic that most Christians don't understand this doctrine and this theology and, uh, and, and will stand before Christ and he had been unable to number their days. Again, making each day count for God that God is able to number your days on earth whether they are spiritual or whether they're not. Whether they're not. My brother My only brother, the last of my nuclear family, passed away, as many of you uh, know, a little over three weeks ago. And um, uh, it was unexpected. I have an obituary uh, newspaper here, and it has a a number of people who have passed away. Uh, Julia uh, 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 Wagner here, she was... 63 years old, and she passed away. Floyd uh, Elvis, uh, he was 81, passed away. A Daryl Emmert, he was 62, passed away. A Mary Bailey, she was 89, she passed away. And my brother here at 69. An obituary, an obituary here of lives of many that have passed away teach me to number our days. So now what happens, let's just say, to my brother? Did and was God able to number his days? Remember, God will only number spiritual days. Uh, uh, areas that I will share with you here shortly of, of how and why he would number only spiritual days. He won't number carnal days, fleshly days, l- uh, days uh, here on earth lived for oneself, uh, uh, lived in sins. He, he doesn't number those days. He only numbers those that have a criteria that he deems to be spiritual and eternal. My brother has passed away. I've read you the obituary of uh, literally there was uh, probably 80 in this uh, newspaper and he being one at the age of 69 and Isaiah note beloved Isaiah 38 12 Isaiah declares that when one passes away the life is cut away from the loom and it is hung from the balconies of heaven Beloved, I brought here just a tallit uh, to be kind of an illustration of, uh, of one's life. Let's just, uh, 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 in your mind's eye, pretend a minute that this is, uh, uh, you know, someone's life who had passed away. Maybe this is my brother's life, if you will. And, and, and he passed away three plus weeks ago and his life was cut from the loom and God hung his life and, and how, listen, how his days were lived here on the earth and how many days God was able to number and to count. Teach me to number my days. Not just naturally how long and how short life is, but spiritually is my day today, is it going to be numbered by God? God does not number carnal days. 
days of living in the flesh, days of sin and rebellion and anarchy. Uh, and, 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 but he numbers spiritual days. And maybe uh, in this uh, tallit that uh, the, the stripes you see, blue and the gold, represent, as it were, days that were numbered by the Father. My brother's life was hung. The, it was cut from the loom of this life and it was hung from the balconies of heaven. And, and, so, and so here is a life. Here is a life. Okay, and, and we see here, whomever this could represent, I'm not sharing with you. My brother had very little uh, spiritual days that were numbered. I'm just giving you an illustration of your life and mine that one day, beloved, it's going to be cut from the loom, uh, barring a rapture which uh, will soon be approaching. But, but here, is, here is a life. And I want to make sure, beloved, that your, your life is numbered by God. I want every day from this day on that it's numbered by God and your, your life is, is filled with, with the, the gold and the blue and, and all of the days that God has numbered concerning um, its spiritual value to Him. And when He hangs your life from the balcony, you will be able to look and to see how worth it was for you to surrender all to him in this life, in this life. So all of your spiritual days are numbered by God, but not all of my days have been numbered if they're not spiritual. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 39 through 46. 1 Corinthians 15, 39 through 46. Paul is highlighting this understanding. He says, All flesh is not the same flesh. For there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another of fish, and another of birds. There is also celestial, heavenly bodies, and terrestrial, earthly bodies. But the glory of the heavenly is one, and the glory of the earthly is another. Please listen. For there is one glory of the sun, one glory of the moon, glory of, uh, of, of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. Pause. We have taught you stars in your Bible almost always represent Christian people. Revelation 12, 4, the tail of the dragon, Satan, took down one-third of the stars and cast them to heaven. Those, beloved, as we have taught you and shown you in your Bible, those weren't demons or, or fallen angels that Satan took with him. Stars were Christians. It speaks of the great falling away 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 5 and Revelation 12, 4. Paul again declares, even as stars differ in glory one from another, so shall it be in the resurrection of your life. You're a star, beloved, and I am a star, and there's going to be a different radiance of glory, a different radiance of, uh, of authority, a different radiance of position in heaven, in the millennium, in the new heavens and the new earth. Okay, he goes on to say, there's a natural body and there will be a spiritual body. However, the spiritual is not first. But the natural is first, and then afterward, the spiritual. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always, e always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, underlining, teach me to number my days, make every day of my life count for God count for God I am endeavoring for you and I to fully have a revelation deep in your soul and spirit that from this day on we will endeavor 
for God to be able to count my days. That when your life again is cut from the loom, that you have so many days that God has counted, that you will look in the balconies of heaven and you will see that all of the pain, all of the tears, all of the heartache, all of the loneliness, all of the separations, everything prone to you and I will be worth it for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, for God to uh, number your days, I want you to now listen. For God to begin to number your days. Again, He will only number them if they are spiritual and if they have a connection to the uh, gospel message, the kingdom message, which I'll share with you how to make sure your days are numbered by God. It all begins, beloved, uh, at salvation. For God to begin to number your days, again, He won't number them if they're not tied in to this gospel and your heart and your life uh, and in areas that we have already shared. But it begins here. For God to number your days, listen, begins at salvation. So God to number your days starts when? It starts when you're born again. It starts when you are saved. So God begins, as it were, calls the angel, uh, Gabriel, whomever, begins to pin in the book of life and begins to write down when days of your life are numbered spiritually, that have value, that have eternal uh, consequences, again, in heaven, uh, it has consequences in the millennium, the thousand-year reign of Christ and His bride, in the new heavens and the new earth, and even will have value in this life. But it begins when? It begins at salvation. I'm going to give you proof scriptures for this teaching and this doctrine. I'm not doing, I'm going to just throw stuff out there. I'm going to give you proof scriptures. Exodus 12, 2. God declared to the Israelites before they were being uh, freed from Egypt. He said, now this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. God was numbering the days of Israel when he was freeing them from the tyranny of Egypt and its slavery. He said, this marks salvation. This marks now, I'm able to number your days as a nation, Israel. It is the beginning of months for you, and it shall be the first month. It was here that God instructed the Israelites, listen, to kill that precious lamb, Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Exodus 12, 2 was a type uh, of, of Christ and Passover, referring to your salvation and mine. Okay? It was the beginning of months to you. It was here that they killed the Passover lamb. It was then that they were freed from Egypt and, uh, and, and God began to lead them out of, of Egypt, typifying the world. And, uh, and he says, this is a new beginning for you. Uh, and then God was beginning to number their days. He said, it's the first month for you. Historically, when God told them that, it was the seventh month. Your Bible says, and God says, I'm changing now uh, uh, an understanding of this month. It is the first month for you. You are now, as it were, you've eaten the lamb. You've eaten all of it. You've, you've accepted the blood of that lamb on the lintels and the doorposts of your life, cleansing you from sins of yesterday, today, and, uh, and tomorrow as well. And you are being freed from the powers of, of bondage and slavery of sin and of the devil and of the world system. And I'm changing the date. You are now, this is the first month, Israel, not the seventh month. And you now have the capacity, please listen, 
to have your days numbered by me. For your days to be numbered by God, there has to be salvation. It begins when you are born again and you are saved. Once again, just because you are a Christian now and you have the blood applied to your life does not mean that God is able to number your days. Did you hear me? Just because you're a Christian now, you're going to heaven, and you have the blood of Christ within you that has cleansed and washed you, doesn't mean your days are numbered by God. Why? Because if, like most Christians, you've accepted the fire insurance card and you don't have a true uh, teaching and understanding of that gospel uh, message of the gospel of the kingdom, not just the gospel of salvation, then most Christians, I've been to hundreds of churches, most are living unto themselves. Most are uh, half-hearted, most. Okay, Like I said, I've been to hundreds of churches and still are. Most have not bowed their knee and totally endeavored to give themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ and His kingdom. And so their days have not been numbered. Example, 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1. I don't want you to turn there. I want to share this with you and you can go back and look at it in your Bible. Okay, giving you proof scriptures. 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1. The Bible uh, begins to add up all of the years and it shares with us how many years from the time that Israel left Egypt to the building of Solomon's temple. 1 Kings 6, 1 and following. It begins to list out all of the movements and migration of the nation of Israel from the exodus of Egypt to the building of Solomon's temple. And 1 Kings 6 and 1 and following, listen, declares it was 480 years. 480 years from the exodus of leaving and being freed from Egypt to the building of Solomon's temple, 480 years. Acts chapter 13, uh, verses 18 through 22. Just write it down somewhere or come back and listen. I want you to listen to this. Acts 18, uh, verses 18, excuse me, Acts 13, verses 18 through 22. The Bible declares those same migrations and that same time span from leaving Egypt to the building of Solomon's temple. But they, on that, adding that up, it comes up with 573 years. 1 Kings 6, 1 and following says that time span was, you add them up, was 480 years. Acts 13 Verses uh, uh, 18 through 22, it declares it was 573 years, 93 years different. This is where many uh, uh, unsaved archaeologists, scientists, naysayers point to the Bible and say, look at the discrepancy uh, between uh, 1 Kings 6, 1 and following. Acts 13, and you have the same time span, and yet you have 93 years different. The Bible is, in, uh, is not true. It's not factual. You see, it has so many errors in it. But, beloved, that is not the case here. What took place here was the spiritual principle of God numbering Israel days since Exodus chapter 12, verse 2. Since they ate of the Passover lamb and applied the blood, which is salvation to you and I. First the natural, then the spiritual. That's the Passover feast. And Christ is that lamb that takes away the sins of the world. What happened was that if you note this scripture uh, in the uh, book of Judges, chapter 3, verses 8 through 13. 
Judges chapter 3, verses 8 through 13, we find that the nation of Israel began to backslide during that time frame, began to backslide, began to turn away from God, began to live unto themselves, began to follow other idols and other little g gods during that time frame. Do you know how many years, if you add up those years in the book of Judges that were wasted, that were not spiritually counted? 93 years. So what took place that God was numbering the days of Egypt, which were either going to be spiritual days numbered, or if they were lived in rebellion, if they were lived to self, if they were lived to carnal fleshly lives, if they were lived outside of God's uh, word, then God could not count them. So what we do see here, that the list in uh, 1 Kings 6, 1 of 480 years was actually those were the years that, uh, uh, that God, uh, uh, you see, he could not count the 93 years. He couldn't count the 93 years. And you see here the total years there in Acts 13 was 573. So 93 years of the nation of Israel were not counted and were not numbered as spiritual before God. Let me give you uh, another example here. Another example. And just be mindful, beloved, again, as I give you these uh, examples, that whenever you were saved, that's when God had an opportunity to number your days, whether they were spiritual or not. And for me, I'm endeavoring to redeem the time. Why? Because I have had a lot of wasted days that had and were not numbered by God. And many of us, some watching, but many more not, have so many wasted days that when their life is cut from the loom, they will have nothing here. They will have no days that are numbered. They will have no spiritual days as they endeavor to give an account of their life before Christ himself. Before Christ himself. And I don't want you and I to have any more wasted days. I don't want you to have any more days that are not counted before God himself. Before God himself. Another proof scripture, uh, beloved, here in Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. Genesis 11, don't turn to it, just listen. In Genesis 11, verse 31, Abraham who is the father of our faith, the Bible declares he was 60 years old. And God called him out of Babylon, out of the nation of idolatry, and said, I'm going to take you to Canaan. And, and told him who to take with him, told him how to go, and gave him the direction. And what did Abraham do? The Bible says he got to the halfway point, and he settled in a city called Haran. Haran means to dry up, to delay, to wither. To dry up, to delay, and to wither. It was the halfway point to Canaan. God, he left at the age of 60. He did not obey God. He took uh, his father-in-law and Lot, and, and uh, even though he was called to take Sarah, uh, Sarai with him, he took his father-in-law, he took Lot, and they ended up causing him uh, to be delayed and to dry up in a, a city called Haran. God does not mention him again and does not uh, mention Abraham's life for 15 years until Abraham was 75 years old. There was no mention of Abraham's life. There was no visitation. There was no altars built. There was no sacrifices. God did not even speak to him according to your Bible. Why? Because God was not able to number his days for 15 years. 
at the age of 75, then Abraham began to pursue and to walk and to leave Haran and head to Canaan. And then God visited him and gave him revelation. Abraham began to build altars unto God and God began to count and to number his days again from 60 to 75 days. 15 years of the father of our faith, his life, those were wasted days. They were not accrued or accounted to his spiritual life. They were not numbered. Why? He was in Haran. He was wasting away. He was delayed for a host of reasons. And God uh, did not again acknowledge those days as value to his eternal life. 15 years. 15 years wasted another proof scripture genesis 16 verse 16 the bible begins to pick up abraham's life again okay at the age of 86 god was promising him a promised child uh, that uh, god would sovereignly do and to, to bring forth birth out of the womb of Sarai and to Abram uh, and God changed their name after that birth and and so at the age of 86 the declaration came to Abram and yet the Bible doesn't speak of Abra, Abram again until chapter 17 verse 1 through 11 13 years there was no mention of a visitation from God again there were no altars that Abraham was uh, building. There were no sacrifices. There was, there was no, well, what was happening? There was 13 years unmentioned days again of Abraham's life that were wasted. Why? Because he and Sarai became impatient. And she said to Abram, why don't you go in to our maid servant and, and bring forth a child of the flesh, Hagar, Okay, and they brought forth Ishmael, a child of the flesh, a child of the working of the flesh without God, trying to help God. And God did not count any of those days from the age of 86 until, or excuse me, the days of, uh, yeah, 86 until the, the, uh, the age of 99. 13 years that he wasted his life on flesh, on carnal living, carnal life, asking God to bless Ishmael. And yet there were no days numbered until Abraham was 99 years old. Then visitation came. Then revelation came. Altars were being built. Why? Because Abraham began to understand God was going to bring a promised child miraculously and not through his flesh. Example number four. Proof scriptures of the doctrine I'm teaching you. That God numbers your spiritual days. Not just throwing this doctrine out to you. Expecting you to believe it. I'm giving you proof scriptures. That you are required to go back. Acts chapter 17. To see if these things are so. A Berean Christian. Genesis 4, 17, we find the genealogy of Cain. Again, write it somewhere or go back and listen again, saint. The genealogy of Cain. We find that Cain killed his brother Abel. We've taught that many times. And we see in uh, the genealogy of Cain that God does not even mention Cain's life. Does not even mention the descendants of Cain. Why? Because he killed his brother Abel. He went on to live for himself in rebellion and anarchy towards God. And God did not number Cain's life. Did not number his descendants. But yet when you look at Genesis chapter 5 verse 1. You see the genealogy of Seth. Who took his, uh, Abel's place in God's book of life and lineage and we see here that God describes and adds up and numbers uh, Seth's life his descendants and he gives ages to all of them 
how old they were, how old each person was, who begat who in terms of offspring, the years they lived. And uh, again, you see God's principle that God numbered the lineage of Seth. Christ came through that lineage of Seth. Uh, and, uh, and, and you and I spiritually have come through that lineage of Seth and not the lineage of Cain. Why again wasn't Cain mentioned in his descendants and, and how long he lived and, uh, and who he begat and begat and begat. Uh, God, uh, uh, there was no numbering of their days and no mentioning of them. Why? Because there was no spiritual uh, value and understanding of those lives. The genealogy was not even, their lives were not acceptable to God. But we find here that the life and lineage of Seth was. Scripture for you, beloved, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians 5, 10. Making every day count for God Teach me to number my days. Paul said, for we must all, you and I, all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that you, each of us and me, may receive what is due for the things done while you are in this earth, in your body, whether good or bad. One of the, uh, uh, Jesus said, I am with you and my reward is, and I'm coming soon and my reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done each day and in this life. Did you hear all of that? We, Revelation 22, 12, we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of our life. 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 15, Paul says, If anyone builds on the foundation using gold, silver, and costly stone, Okay, those are symbolic of God's character, God's redemption, and diadems, the giving of good works back to God. Or uh, wood, hay, and straw, or stubble, basically living to oneself, li just living your day according to the means of this world. He said, your work, your day, your life, will be shown for what it is for that day. Those days will bring it to light. For it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's day or work. If what has been built survives, the builder, you, will receive a reward. Your day has been numbered. If it is burned up, the builder, your life and mine, will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. So now many of you, um, some of you, whomever, you might feel I've wasted so many days. I've wasted so much life. I feel that way, and I continue to ask God to help me redeem the time that has been wasted. I want when he cuts my life from the loom, I want to have my days numbered by him. Not only will they have great benefit in this life, but more so in the life to come. I don't want to have wasted days, days that have no value in terms of God numbering them. God numbering them. So there is hope I want to give you before I share with you how to make sure your days are numbered by God. There's hope. Joel 2.25. God says, Joel 2.25, I will restore unto you the years the locust has eaten from you, the canker worm has eaten, the caterpillar has eaten from you, and the palmer worm. We have a promise of hope that if you and I, by His grace and mercy, yield and surrender to what is being taught to you through His Bible, He promises to restore 
the days, yea, even the years that have been eaten by the palmer worm, the caterpillar, uh, by the locust, and also by the palmer worm. He promises to restore the locusts, all four, to restore the years they have been eaten. We've taught you that two of those insects eat the inside of a plant and two eat the outside. Whatever has been eaten by the enemy, by this world system, on the inside of your emotions, your feelings, the issues of your heart and life and thoughts, whatever has been eaten <clears throat> on the outside of health, of bankruptcy, of, of living life with family members and torment and heartache and all, he promises to restore if you and I follow what he's declaring to you and I. He said in Psalms 81.10, For listen, Psalms 81.10, For a day in your courts are better than a thousand elsewhere. You and I have hope. We have hope. So I want you now as we move into how to make sure your days are counted by God. Teach me to number my days, not just in the natural, but more importantly in the spiritual. So what do I do? First, recognize that your natural life, if you haven't already, is moving quickly. Our natural days are numbered, and thus your spiritual days must be recognized as well, must be understood from this day forward. And you must have sobriety and understanding of what is being taught today. Ephesians 5.15, Paul says, listen, be very careful, put your name in there, be very careful, Steve, how you live. Put your name in there. Be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity of every day, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, <coughs> but understand what the Lord's will is for you. Be not unwise, be careful. Have an understanding of the day you have been given, beloved. Okay, so what can I do or not do so that my day counts before God? Are you ready, beloved? I'm going to give you what your Bible declares so your day and my day can be counted and can be numbered before God so that when your life is cut from the loom, it doesn't look like this. It doesn't look like this. I want it to look like this. I want it to be filled with this. Days that have been numbered by God. Days that have been numbered, that have been counted by God. Not wasted, okay. Well, what do I need to do? What should I do? What shouldn't I do? How does God number my days? Number one, you, you start according to your Bible. You start living and you start waking up uh, with an attitude of gratitude. An attitude of gratitude. Do you wake up in the morning, beloved, and say, Lord, thank you for another day of life. Thank you for another day. I'm able to live. I'm able to breathe. I'm able to endeavor to bring a thankfulness and gratitude to you. Do you have, are you, how do I have my days numbered? Number one, that you wake up with an attitude of what? Gratitude. An attitude of gratitude. You wake up with a new day filled with opportunity to declare and to show my thankfulness and gratitude to God. I thank Him for my blessings. I thank Him that I'm saved. I have, for me, I have two eyes, you know. I can see, I can smell, I can talk, I can walk and eat. And some, beloved, aren't able to do all of that. And yet, many and some of those that I have met 
Some are thankful and filled with gratitude. Thankfulness is mentioned 73 times in your New Testament. Or do you wake up and just go, oh, another ugly day. I don't want to get up. I don't want to live. Uh, I got to go to work. I got to see such and such. I got to, I hate this life. I hate this and, and on and on. And there's no, listen, there's no thankfulness. There's no attitude of gratitude. How do I have my days count before God? We ask him, put inside of me if I don't have it, an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of thankfulness. The Israelites, when God was taking them to the promised land, uh, God says, you've complained ten times to me, Numbers 11, 1 through 3, without thankfulness, without gratitude. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, 19, Paul says, in everything, give thanks unto God. He didn't say, listen, for everything, in everything give thanks that regardless of not for everything we don't thank him for the car wreck we don't thank him for the death we we endeavor to to understand that in this situation he is asking and requiring me to trust him in it to bring forth a heart of thankfulness. God, there's something I can thank you for in this situation. If I, if I look long enough, if I pray unto you, what can I find that I could be thankful for about that? Just, just look in this and realize that God causes all things to work together for good. He'll bring good out of it, beloved. One person emailed me and had recently had a stroke and God was working that scripture in them Romans 8 28 where is anything good out of this and God was he shared and God began to show him the good that was coming out of this out of this uh, area that he was he was uh, working and healing in in everything give thanks to God for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus are you looking for God's blessings in your life are you looking for areas you can thank him for why because he's worthy beloved or are you listening to the devil look at this look at that and everything's negative just a few scriptures on thankfulness psalms 100 verse 4 we enter his gates with what psalms 100 verse 4 we enter his gates with what with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So in other words, when I'm thanking him and I'm grateful, I'm actually becoming closer to him. Why? We enter his gates with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving brings a, a nearness to him. Uh, uh, I'm entering his courts with praise. It, it's bringing me closer to him. Here's one beloved that's just working on me. Luke 6, 35, Jesus said, but love your enemies. <laughs> we can stop there, right? Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Wow, really? Then your reward, your numbering of your days will be great. You will be children of the Most High. Watch, listen to what he says. This is what's working on me. Because he is kind even to the unthankful, the ungrateful, and the wicked. God declares, uh, I am even kind to the unthankful. There's been so many things, especially recently, that Tina and I have done for some people, quote, Christian people, listen, and they are so unthankful and ungrateful. They don't even say thank you. They don't even rarely acknowledge the sacrifices that have been done for them. And they're unthankful. And God says he is kind even to the unthankful. And so that's really working on me because it bothers me when people aren't thankful. Our children were taught over and over and over and over and over again to be a thankful person. To be thankful first to God and to all of those around you. Thanking uh, that individual thanking them for dinner thanking your mother for this thanking them for that thanking this and that and so we are endeavoring to put into them a culture of thankfulness and God says I'm even I'm even kind to those that are unthankful and for me I get upset when there is not un, when there is not thankfulness Jesus you know in Luke 17 Verse 15 through 19, he cleansed the ten lepers and only one came back. Listen, 
and gave him thanks. And Jesus says, where are the other nine? Okay. One out of ten, ten percent of Christians, are they thankful? First Chronicles 16, 34. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Thankfulness. Psalm 75, 1. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your wondrous works. Declare your name is near. Psalms 107, 8. Oh, that man and woman would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Psalms 119.62, at midnight I will rise to give thanks unto you because of your righteous judgments. Daniel 6.10, now when Daniel knew that, that the writing was signed and anyone who did not bow to Nebuchadnezzar in his upper room, he went with his windows open toward Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times a day and prayed, listen, and gave thanks before his God as was the custom of his early days. You know, he got thrown into a lion's den after that. But he was willing to give thanks to God even though there was an edict that no one worships anyone but the king. And lastly, beloved, on this first one, want to quickly just give one more, an attitude of gratitude, thankfulness, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. The Bible says, but know this, in the last days, in the last days, there are going to be perilous, terrible times. You're living in the last days. Acts 2, 17, Peter declared, these are the last days. In the last days, there are going to be terrible times, perilous times. Why? People are going to be uh, lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to parents, unthankful, ungrateful, without natural affection, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness and denying the powers therein. Stay away from such people. How do I make my days count? Do you have an attitude of gratitude? What if I don't? I pray, Lord, would you put in me and renew my mind and put in me a new heart and cleanse me that my uh, eyes would see the, 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 the goodness and the blessings that you have given unto me. And, and help me go forward regardless of the dark hour I'm living in and the situations of family, of children, of husbands and wives and, 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 and solitary living, of loneliness. Um, have, help me to have an attitude of thankfulness. And number two, beloved, Mark chapter 9, verse 41. How do I make my day count for God? How do I make my day count for God? Mark 9, 41. Jesus said, now listen, beloved, I'm going to stop after this one. We're already in an hour and a half. And again, I'm thankful to all of you that continue to watch, even though uh, when I see an hour and a half on anything or anything, I'm like, wow, who's got an hour and a half? I want to commend you uh, for your devotion, your passion, your love to learn and to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that the hour we live in is going to require the deepening of your Christian life, that pablum, pumping, pulpiteering isn't going to uh, hold you when the floods come and the rains come and the winds blow against your house. You're going to have to dig down deep in God's word and build your life upon the rock. Jesus Christ is that rock and your life will remain, yea, it will shine. Continue to press ahead, continue to ask God to give you time to learn to study, to devote, to worship, continue to uh, become the man and woman of God each and every single day. How do I make my days count before God? How do I make sure God's numbering them? An attitude of gratitude to Mark 9, 41. Jesus said, listen, whoever gives you a cup of cold water in my name because you belong to Jesus Christ, will in no wise lose their reward. That one, that day will be counted. What is he saying? 
Listen again. Whoever gives. He's talking about giving. Whoever gives a cup of cold water. Wow. We're talking in the Middle East. Okay. We're talking there is no cold water. (laughs) It's hard to find cold water in the Middle East. He's talking about giving. And he's talking about the level of sacrifice. How do I make sure my day is counting? It is called sacrificial giving. He said, if whomever gives that cup of cold water, look, find a cup of cold water in the Middle East. Okay. He's talking about whoever, whoever has given, whoever gives a cup of cold, deep sacrificial giving, not just water, cold water, that there has been such sacrifice to get this cold water, such sacrifice in giving this cold water. He said to someone who belongs to Jesus Christ, and you give that in my name, your day will be counted. Great is your reward in heaven. For your day to be counted, beloved, is tied in to your sacrificial giving. Most in the Christian community don't give to God and to His kingdom. Most in the Christian community, if they have a baseline, it's the law, 10%. Okay, really, the law asked and demanded 23.3% of the giving of the law. We're not under law, we're under grace, which basically means all that God has given to you and to me all belongs to Him. You're just stewards. You're just here to manage what He's given you. How do I make my day count? Are you sacrificially giving unto God uh, in in respect of his name? Now, he doesn't, again, require uh, 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 the giving of, let's just say, this one over here who has been given much. Maybe you've only been given a dove, a pigeon. Maybe you've only been given uh, grains of bread. He said, now, if I've given you a bull, Give me a bull. If I've given you a lamb, give me a lamb. If I've given you a pigeon, give me a pigeon. If I've given you a sparrow, give me a... If I've given you grain, give me grain. He doesn't ask of you something you don't have, but what he does and has given you, he is saying to you that sacrificial giving uh, in respect uh, to your life makes a day count, makes a life count. Did you know, beloved, that God speaks of money more than any other subject and topic in the Bible? More than salvation, more than deliverance, more than healing, more than miracles, more than even the topic of uh, regeneration and, uh, and sins. Money is spoken about more than any other topic. Why? Because it is mostly attached to the hearts of men and women. That if God can get to that arena surrounding the issue of your treasure, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, that that will open up the floodgates, listen, of a surrendered life. Of a surrendered life. Absolute surrender. He's talking here about giving. If anyone gives, giving a cup, of cold water. Again, look at the level of sacrificial giving. Cold water in the Middle East. Go ahead, find it. Okay. And then bring it to someone, he says here, in my name, who belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Great is that one's reward, and your day shall be counted. Your life will be counted. I have a number of uh, ways that our day uh, days can be counted. And uh, I'll do one more quickly. I'm so sorry. I got to, let me just do one more and I'll get out of here. Number three, it is this. It's simply this. Um, when you have opportunity, listen, simple. Okay? Do good. How do I have my day counted before God? Endeavor to look for an opportunity to do good. You see, these, Jesus said, what, what this gospel shares with you and I isn't so far that you have to go into heaven and get it or swim into the deepest of seas to retrieve it. He says, the words of this Bible are near to you. Just, just grab them and implement them in your life. Okay, Jesus said, even a fool will err not therein. It's there. Well, how do I make my day count before God? Are you doing good? 
I'll give you scripture, Acts 10, 38. Jesus went about doing good. Simple. Are you looking for opportunities to do good? Opening a door for someone, letting them go in before you. Okay? Letting someone go in before you. If you're on the plane, which I am and Tina are so often, once that plane hits the ground, the tarmac, and comes to a stop and the little dinger goes on, everybody almost stands up and they begin to rush to the aisles and you got people in the back running up to the front and so you have a choice to make. Am I going to tell them, get back in your spot? Is, is, really, is really doing good let them go before you. Your turn to go. Sir, why, why don't you go ahead? You, that row, go ahead and go before you. Let them do good when you have opportunity to do good. Boots on the ground, you come into Chick-fil-A, and there are two lines coming in, and the cars are merging, but you want to make sure you're ahead of them because you know you finished the order, and yet you're coming out at the same time. Do good, brother. Just let the car go before you. They'll get your order right, especially at Chick-fil-A. You see a shopping cart and you come up to uh, the grocery store and it's right there in a the parking spot. Well, why don't you park there and then take the shopping cart and put it back in where it goes. Hello, Christian. Put it back where it goes so someone else can park there. Uh, Jesus went around doing good. Are you looking for, how do I have my day count? God wants to number your day. He's looking to see, are you looking for opportunities to do good? And when he sees you and I are willing, he will give you opportunities to do good. If he gave you opportunities to do good and you and I didn't do them, he actually, you actually would incur judgment. And his mercy is so great that he won't provide those opportunities for you and I to do good unless what? You're willing to do good. You go to the grocery store. Again, your cart is full. You look behind you and you got a guy who's got five items. But you know what? You want to make sure you get yours done and you want to get home and you got traffic and yet you could do good. You could turn around to the person and you could say, why don't you go ahead of me? Caution. What if he doesn't say thank you? I told you what I'm working on is giving forth sacrificial uh, areas of life and time and space and a host of things. And when they're unthankful, I become upset and God's working on me to say, look, that's not who I am. That I actually release love and mercy and sacrifice even to the unthankful. How do I have my day counted? Are you looking for opportunities to do good? Looking for opportunities to do good uh, in your life. I'm going to stop here because the next one uh, is, is really going to uh, come into some depth in my life and yours. And so next time, God willing, we get together again. I'll bring forth the remainders of um, the scriptural principles of how to make sure your days are numbered. And how to make sure your day is counted before God. I leave you again with a reminder. Here's the obituary of my beloved brother who passed away three plus weeks ago along with a host of other people. Ages from nine all the way up to 97. And he was in here. What happens now? He was born again. He was spirit filled. And now Isaiah 38, 12. His life is cut from the loom, isn't it? Can't come back now and start over. What does is, what is his life look like? Is it filled with days that God was able to count and able to number? Was, was it filled with that? Or, or is it a life there is a life lived to self, a life lived unto you, a life lived uh, to the this world system, a life lived in continual sins and rebellion and anarchy. Um, how, how many days of my life have been wasted? I want your life, beloved, to be filled with this. 
I want to see you and I in heaven where you and I look at your life on this earth and that we can just applaud the goodness of God. We can applaud the wealth of revelation. He that's been given much, much is required. Okay, you that have been given much, much is required. He's bankrupting your life and mine so that we are so dependent and we cry out for him, Lord, only by you. Only through you, only in your grace and mercy can I do kingdom life and kingdom work each and every day. Help me wake up, O God, with an attitude of gratitude. Help me be willing to be sacrificial in my life. I'm not trying to get your money. I'm not trying to get your money. God has been so gracious that we are able to have our life and the needs met. Everything goes to help those that are in need and to the poor and the work of the ministry. I don't have a, a, a church payment of uh, 10000 I have to worry about. I don't have, I don't have people on the uh, choir and in the worship team I got to pay. I don't have all, uh, all of that. This is just, this goes right into the kingdom work. Help me, Lord, give me opportunities to do good. Show me where I can just do good even if they're unthankful and ungrateful. I want my days to count before you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. I pray that it would just uh, not be, we would not just be hearers of the word, but we would be doers of it. You told Joshua, Joshua, If you would not only hear these words, but do them, I will make your way successful. I will make your way prosperous. I will count your days and number them. Won't we, like Moses, repeat over and over and over, teach me to number my days. Teach me not only to number them in the natural, that life is short. Life is short. We don't know when you're going to inhale and call our spirit and soul home. But I want each day to count for you. I want you to number my day. I want it to count for you. I don't want to live for me. I don't want to just live a carnal, uh, um, listless, wasted day and a wasted life. I pray your grace and mercy would fall upon each of us now. We wouldn't feel condemned. We wouldn't feel even guilty. We would feel hope for you. A promise you would restore All of the the canker worm, the locust, the palmer worm, the caterpillar has eaten. We call for a spirit of, of restoration and recovery in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray the psalmist, a day in your court is worth a thousand elsewhere. That even one day living for you is equated to a thousand. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God bless you, beloved. I uh, will see you in a couple of weeks, God willing. Covet your prayers and all you can do to help in the work of the ministry, however God leads you. We love you and miss you in Jesus' precious name.